Good evening, everyone. Um, here's another DM25 uh, video chat. Like, it's my second one, and it's just as uh, unnerving to be sitting here um, on my own. I have a little dog here, a puppy, uh, as, as my companion and comrade, um, and answering questions. But the issue is very important. So we'll warm up. Well, I will warm up. Uh, allow me to begin by saying that uh, today the chat is not going to be a general chat about everything. I saw there are some uh, questions asked, even about the the, the very um, raison d'etre of the end. Not for today. Today, I want to discuss the process that has begun, the debate regarding the... Um, um, the proposal that has come from the CC for um, what we call the electoral wing of DiEM25. Let me just say a few words about the, the, the raison d'etre of all this and uh, the motivation for having this discussion in the first place. Then a few more words about uh, the process that we have established uh, and finally well, ultimately, end up responding to the many interesting, fascinating, challenging questions that you have posed to me. Right. You'll recall that for the first year of our existence as DiEM, we worked very hard to come up with a progressive agenda for Europe, a policy agenda. Uh, we worked primarily uh, and very significantly on uh, the European Union. Around the time when we were proposing it, Remember, last March, some of us became aware of um, a cruel reality. And the reality is that however uh, good your policy proposals might be, our original aspiration to carry with us progressive forces, existing political parties, and to persuade them through the strength of our arguments and policy recommendations to take on our agenda so that we could support them. Um, that aspiration was, um, well, let's put it on the optimistic side. Let's face it, existing political parties are not that interested in ideas. They're not that interested in policy agendas. They are far more interested in the little petty political games that they play uh, within their party structure, and across the political spectrum. This sounds a bit cynical, but let's face it, that is the situation. However, let me also remind you that right from the beginning, from the time when we inaugurated uh, DiEM25 in Berlin at the Volksbühne in February 2016, 
we were very clear on what we wanted to do. We wanted to lead with ideas. We wanted to lead with policy proposals and recommendations. A policy agenda for a progressive, democratized and democratizing Europe. But we had also said that um, once we develop our policies and once we establish good links with a variety of politi political actors across Europe, uh, we will try our damnest to ensure that there is uh, an alliance, a progressive alliance that promotes those policies and gives electors, voters across Europe an opportunity to vote for those and support them and gain hope from the fact that they have an alternative, that there is an alternative, unlike the dogma of Tina, that there is no alternative. Uh, that would be our first uh, port of call. It would be the first uh, priority to forge those alliances. And you will recall that we um, managed to have very strong links with um, a large number of politicians from existing progressive parties. Katia Keeping is just one example because her name appears again and again in the questions that I'm receiving. Having said that, um, we also made the point that if these alliances do not manage to go beyond the, the standard politicking, which um, is not policy oriented, and in the end our policy agenda uh, falls flat, uh, then we will have to consider running ourselves. We were saying this from right, 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 right from the beginning. Now, on a personal note, I really wish we didn't have to run anywhere. I've run in one election in my life. It was um, a great moment. Uh, it was a great victory. It energized hundreds of thousands of people here in Greece. But it was still not something that I really enjoyed doing. Seeking votes and being part of a standard political machinery uh, is, is not my cup of tea. And I wish that DiEM25 could simply work on the grassroots level, work to uh, display by example what democratic organizations are like, how democratic processes can produce good policies, progressive policies, policies that are simultaneously pragmatic and radical, uh, and then support other political parties and politicians in their pursuit of votes. Since March 25th, when we launched the European New Deal, it became abundantly clear to many of us that political parties, even those who were close to us, spiritually, philosophically, politically, were simply not that interested, that they were not serious about policy. Moreover, we noticed something else. We noticed that um, they're very deeply divided. So somebody asked me, and let me just go straight to a question, how, do you, how would you feel about running against other progressive political forces in an election, like, for instance, Die Linke in Germany? Well, let's consider that, shall we, for a moment. Die Linke ran in the, previous, in the recent election in Germany on an agenda that put good people off. Why? Because they are deeply divided amongst themselves. What is the connection between the Oscar Lafontaine camp in Die Linke and Katja Keeping? They are like two different parties. Uh, with Katja Keeping, who is a member of DM25 and a good comrade, uh, we are in, in full agreement. If the link was Katia Keeping, we would not even consider of um, setting up an electoral wing in Germany. If we had such comrades running political parties everywhere in Europe, we would not be having this conversation. But Katia Keeping's wing in the Linke is, um, let's say, not the dominant faction. And the political program that was put to German progressives smacked off this division. It was like the lowest common denominator between a disintegrationist and anti-European faction and a pro-European, radical European uh, progressive faction. But if you try to create a common program out of those two, all you end up is with a blamange. You, you, you end up with a very unappetizing mix. Now, DiEM25 
facing this situation has to make a decision. We'll all make this together. We can sit on the sidelines and keep supporting a wing of a party that in the end does not manage to take our European New Deal to the people of Germany, let's say, or to the people of France, the equivalent in France, um, hoping that at some point this will happen. Uh, or we can uh, move in the direction of the proposal that uh, I want to discuss today. So let me just very briefly remind you what the proposal is and what it is not. It is not a proposal to turn Diem from a movement into a party. This is why the title of the document that is before you is not another, not just another political party. Diem 25 has a number of um, instruments, a number of uh, uh, means by which to do our work and to change Europe. We have our DSCs, we have our uh, national committees now, we have uh, our uh, validating council, we have our assemblies, our policy paper um, writing mechanisms, drafting mechanisms. The proposal is that we add another instrument to the movement tool toolkit. And that instrument is, we call it on purpose, not a political party, but an electoral wing, an outfit which um, hangs under the Diem umbrella, one of the many means by which Diem, the movement, does its job, its work, which gives us the option, not the obligation, of um, either participating in some alliance with other political parties in some jurisdiction, when we decide as a unitary movement on the basis of an all-member vote to go ahead, or not to. So let's be clear on what the proposal is. The proposal is firstly not to create a political party, but to allow Diem the movement to develop electoral wings in different countries. The question whether these will contest elections or not is a different question. Uh, it, it will be decided together on the basis of the specifics of a particular country or, and of a particular election. Maybe we will run some in a local government election, but not in a national election. Maybe we will run in the European Parliament election 2019 in one country, not in the other. For instance, in Poland, it's quite clear to me that um, DiEM25 is going to throw its lot behind the Razem. In Denmark, it's very likely that since um, there is a, an, an existing party whose leadership were, were instrumental in setting up Diem, and I'm talking about the alternative party, uh, that we will support them. Uh, in other countries, like in Greece, where the political terrain has absolutely fragmented and collapsed, and the, the vast majority of the people have, have no way of ex expressing their radical Europeanism, the essence of what that no vote in the Euro refer referendum of July 2015 was, um, we may choose to run. Since it's, for me personally speaking, as Yannis Orofakis, I cannot see who, whom we could support. Um, here you've got either Troika-led parties or uh, disintegrationists, anti-Europeanists. So, besides the fact that this is a very innovative idea, because it has never happened before, to have a movement that uses electoral wings um, on a case-by-case -case basis. We are also talking about, and you will have noticed that in the text, we're also talking about uh, moving away from the standard notion of a political party. So, for instance, you know that all political parties consider themselves to be owners of their members. They would never accept, for instance, the possibility that um, a member of the, the party should also be a member of another party. Uh, this democratic centralism, this um, belief in the ownership of uh, members is something that is completely at odds with our uh, principles as uh, the Democracy Europe movement. So, just to give an example, imagine that we were to set up uh, an electoral wing in Greece or in Italy, or um, in Britain for that matter. Whether we want to contest an election or not is a separate issue, I insist on this. 
That does not mean that DMRs in Britain or in Italy or in Greece will be forced to join that electoral wing. We could have comrades, for instance, I can imagine in Britain, that are very active members of the Labour Party and DMRs who do not want to be part of the electoral wing of uh, DM25 if we create one. Similarly, in Greece, somebody may want, a DMR may choose not to belong to the electoral wing of DM25. So here is the, the key to this suggestion. Every electoral wing will be absolutely under the control of the movement. All decisions about the policies of the electoral wing, let's say in Greece or in Italy, will be made by all of us, whether we're Greeks, Italians, Germans, Brits, like we've been making all our decisions. So a dimmer in, in Italy may choose not to be a member of the electoral wing of DiEM25 DM in Italy, but still will control the policies of the electoral wing of DiEM25 simply because he or she will be a member of a movement that has these electoral wings. We'll talk about this a little bit more later on, and actually I would so much prefer it if this was a, a running debate with, um, with you, so that I wouldn't just talk on my own. We have to find a platform that does that and allows for this kind of discussion to take place. Close parenthesis. Now, regarding the, the, the process, uh, we have announced it, but let me say a few, a few words about it. Point number one. Uh, at the moment, what we have done as the coordinating collective is we've asked all of you to send us feedback on this proposal. And feedback does not only mean um, improving our proposal, but also counter proposals. Uh, some of you may choose to completely and utterly disagree with the idea of any kind of electoral um, participation anywhere, ever. Uh, and I've already seen this in some of the questions. That's perfectly legitimate. The, the, the option of not participating at all in any election is going to be on the ballot paper in the 1st of November when we have our, uh, our internal all-member vote. But the, I believe there should be more. The CC proposal is one. The no electoral participation at all, it will be definitely a second one. Send us alternative proposals to these two. And make sure that they are phrased in a manner that is brief. And then there can be a long explanation under it, but it is brief enough to, to go on the ballot paper, on, on the voting platform. Now, our coordinating co collective is going to collate these and um, to, to, to prevent repetition so that we don't have, you know, three or four options that are very similar to one another. We are going to collate them so as to make sure that all opinions and all major uh, options are presented and voted for. And then, of course, there will be a second round if none of them get 50% uh, plus one of the vote. But remember, this is only in order to decide if we are going to adopt any kind of uh, electoral wing. Uh, it is not to decide that we will run in elections. That will be a separate vote, conditional on the success or failure of an option which um, um, involves a degree of uh, electoral involvement in the next few uh, months and years. One last point. I saw emails in the, and um, in the forum uh, various expressions of uh, how shall I put it, discontent about the fact that the coordinating collective put forward a proposal. I even saw some views which uh, problematized me uh, that denounced the collective for having dared to put forward a proposal on the basis that the coordinated collective should only coordinate and not have political views. Allow me to speak against this. All views are political. There is, can be no coordinating action which is apolitical. I would take it further, saying that buying a tub of yogurt is a political act. 
Uh, if the work of a coordinated co collective was not political, then why do we elect us ourselves? Why do we go through this process? We're not neutral. Neutrality is impossible in politics. And anyone who pretends that neutrality is possible is toxic politically, you will allow me to say. The idea that the 12 members of the CC should not have a view is um, deeply anti-democratic. Uh, if we try to impose this view, um, then, of course, uh, you, sh you should censor, censure us and indeed remove us from the CC. Uh, and, of course, you will have an opportunity to, to do it because, as you've seen, and we now have started uh, electing the members of the CC. Uh, by the way, let me just add that uh, it was awfully joyous to meet the new members of the CC that were elected, comrades uh, that um, I had not met before and who have seriously enriched the world of the CC. So, let me now go to the questions, because I've spoken far too long, mind you, I'm still speaking because this is a monologue. We need to do something, we need to fix this. Okay, so I'll take it, I'll, I'll just take some questions all together and say a few words. Uh, to be or not to be asks, um, what is the real, pro uh, the, the real purpose of trying to go to, to the European Parliament? In fact, even if DiEM25 would succeed to elect someone, the rules of the function of the European Par Parliament would mean that such person or persons would not have the possibility to have a real impact in them. We don't really care about going to the European Parliament. But what we do care about is that the European Parliament elections are a pan-European electoral contest that allow DiEM to table its European New Deal, its transparency agenda, its green transition agenda, its uh, policy on refugees and, migra and migration, its policies on democracy, on the European Union Constitution, at the pan-European campus. That is what we want. Getting in the European Parliament, a Parliament which is not really a Parliament, some of you have heard me personally denounce the European Parliament as a non-Parliament. Of course, it's not the issue of getting in there. But this is an infrastructure, a whole election that takes place from Finland to Portugal and from Ireland to Greece. This is a fantastic opportunity for us to actually table our proposals, make sure that the European New Deal is out there, that people can actually vote for it. Because, let's face it, if we don't run, they won't be able to vote for it. There won't be any political party that will do anything other than paying lip service to this. Okay, Apollo 11, <laughs> I love your names. Uh, Ciao, Yanis, not just an honor, is a noble motto for the beginning of the political adventure of DiEM25. But what does it mean? Not a power to say that we are not a power seeking bureaucratic party. In democracy, power means democracy. No. In democracy, um, democracy is about uh, taking power away from the minority and um, empowering the majority. It means taking power away from the insiders and giving it to the outsiders, but also in a way that guarantees civil liberties humanist principles and uh, prevents the tyranny of majority dynamism. That's what democracy means. As for the statement that we're not power-seeking bureaucrats, well, allow me to say, to say something very simple. Um, those of us who created DiEM25, and that includes all of us, not just the, 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 the co-founders in February 2016, I'm absolutely convinced that if we were interested in power, we would, we would have joined something else. We would have joined the SPD in Germany, the Syriza party here in Greece, or I would not have left the Syriza party if I cared about having you know, power. We don't care about that. What we do care about is utilizing the processes of democracy in order to pursue the, our common principles and our common vision. Uh, okay. Our impression was that the long-anticipated big debate on EU reform is beginning right now and we should do our best to make our progressive proposals heard. We have been doing that. We've been doing this from the very, very first moment and I'm talking to somebody called Smukster, if that is the name, from Cologne. Uh, this is what we've been doing and this is what we're continuing to, to do and the movement will continue exactly as it was doing it before. But what we do want to do is we want to add another tool in our toolkit the tool that allows us, if we choose to do so, at some point, in some place, to run in an election, in order to take our, um, our agenda, our progressive proposals, 
into the limelight that only an electoral campaign creates. Um, Miguel Cruz says, I miss the Spanish Electoral Association formula, which might exist in other countries as well. Why didn't you include it in the proposal? Perhaps because you don't know about it? Uh, we, we, we do know about it, but you will have noticed, Miguel, that um, our proposal is very minimal. We're talking about creating an electoral wing. In uh, Spain, that will take clearly the form of an electoral association. Similarly, so something similar ha pertains in the case of Germany, but not in the case of Greece or in the case of France. We're completely on the same page here. Uh, could you specify in which countries we have progressive allies and in which countries running uh, might be necessary? I just mentioned two countries in which we have clear allies. We have uh, Poland and we have Denmark. Um, in uh, other countries, um, either we don't have allies or our allies are heavily, heavily fragmented and in a state of permanent infighting. Look at Italy. Look at Germany. I mentioned the, the link uh, before. Uh, Jacob Marmota, very active German member. Uh, how do you feel about DM25 competing with the link and other progressives? Really terrible. Really, really terrible. But you see, I'm going to repeat what I said before. How does D. Linke feel putting forward an, an agenda to German voters? The German voters can, can simply not uh, fathom uh, for the, the simple reason that the factions within uh, D. Linke are so opposed with one another. It's like putting Melenchon and Tsipras in the same party. Now, what kind of agenda can, they, can Melenchon and Tsipras, if they were in the same political party, present a people. It, if they come to a common platform, it's going to be so anodyne, so boring, that in the end the alternative for Deutschland is going to get more votes than Die Linke. Oops, that happened. Yeah? Um, what is the actual idea behind Diems being a party of its own? In Germany, I can hardly detect Diems' influence on the left wing or left party, which seems closest, despite Katia keeping pledge of support. Now, remember, we are not deciding to run in Germany, or in Greece, or in France, or in Italy, or anywhere. What we are deciding is to make a step towards providing ourselves with one more tool in the toolkit. Now, like any good mechanic, do you want to use this tool? It depends on the problem that you are trying to fix. You are not obliged to use it, for God's sake. I mean, it would be terrible if you, if you were forced to use a hammer for everything that you are doing. But the hammer is good to have. And the electoral wing is a bit like um, a hammer or a screwdriver. Uh, when you use it depends on the circumstances. And the circumstances and the choice to use it will be something that we'll decide together. Now we're only deciding whether we want that particular tool in the toolkit, comrades. Um, Anagonostopoulos. Uh, what would the cost of a party be? Oh. Allow me to say that if we ever allowed ourselves to ask such questions back in February 2016, what would the cost of having a pan-European pan movement that changes Europe and democratizes be? We would never have. We, I, I, we would not have gotten out of bed to go to the Volksbühne to to start it. So one step at a time. Let's see what kind of appeal we can have. Um, Let's move in a sequential manner that builds upon what we have created uh, towards that which we are dreaming of. I've been in politics, uh, Cecile Graven says, I've, um, I've been in politics for eight years. I've learned that although it is said that you can make your own decision while voting for a proposal, that is seldomly true. You cannot know what all your voters want, so you have to follow the lead of the party program. But sometimes the program is not very clear about an issue or an issue is not even mentioned in it. Then you have to guess which way your vote has to go. I have noticed that many politicians are afraid their free choice will be criticized by their party members and so on. I think a political party without a clear and concrete program will fail and will split up. Correct. So let's make sure that if and when we run anywhere, we have a clear agenda. Uh, we have shown signs so far that, uh, judging by the European New Deal, that we are capable of producing clear, persuasive, coherent, substantial policy agendas. 
Uh, Claudia from Italy. Uh, here we're very close. Be we were close between a radical left but very traditional old function. The situation has stalled in Italy. I know. I just came from Italy. We need a political force of civil society and movement, but also another other collab. What can DiEM do? Well, we were in Italy all last week, uh, Claudia, and we went from Torino and Milano to Ferrara to Napoli to Bologna. Bologna, then Napoli, and then lastly to Sicily in Palermo. Everywhere we went, we tried to do two things. First, be a unifying force for progressives. You know very well how fragmented progressives and especially the left are in Italy. Uh, we also tried to lead with ideas, to lead with policies, and not with personalities. Every time I heard somebody say, Oh, but you know, we need to have an alliance with Dilemma or not have an alliance with Dilemma. Uh, but what about the Fondazione and what about this and what about the other? This old style of doing politics, of first deciding who you want to go to bed with and then working out what you want to do when you're in bed with them, so to speak, what kind of policy agenda you want, this is not us. It's too boring, we just don't care for it. Uh, we ask a diff very different question. What needs to be done? What should the policies of the Italian progressives be in the Eurogroup? What should they be about the green transition, about transparency, about democracy? Uh, and then whoever wants to agree with this policy agenda joins us. And whoever doesn't want to, to agree with us doesn't join us. This old Byzantine way of getting around a table and cutting deals. We much rather read poetry or listen, or listen to music. Uh, Dominique Clonu. I heard Yanis saying that, it, that if he would be elected at the European Parliament in 2019, he would go and resign the same day. Does he really mean it? Well, look, personally, I really don't enjoy being in Parliament. Greek Parliament, European Parliament. Um, I remember uh, with a great deal of joy something that Tony Benn said, uh, the great leftist uh, politician in Britain, a wonderful man. He said, uh, when he resigned his uh, seat after 50, 51 years in Parliament, he said, now I'm resigning my seat in Parliament because I want to concentrate on politics. As I said before, uh, if we run, let's say, for the European Parliament election, it will not be because we want the seats in the European Parliament and uh, the uh, fat salaries that come with that. So let's discuss amongst ourselves at, at a later stage. If we decide to have electoral wings and contest the European Parliament elections, um, as Lorenzo Marsili says, hack into the European Parliament process, electoral process, in order to make our agenda visible, let's come to an agreement amongst ourselves as to um, what do we do about divvying up the various positions, official positions. It could be a good idea, I think, for those who get elected, to commit to making one maiden speech, as it's called, in Parliament, uh, maybe stay for six months, and then resign. And then give their position to the runners-up within DiEM, so that DiEM preserves these seats, but we have a constant rotation of members. Because they, what matters, personally speaking, allow me to speak again personally, I would not want to be in Brussels for five years to be stuck in, in that awful building of the European Parliament. I would much rather, you know, Make my mark there for five minutes, five hours, five weeks, and then let another VMer take my place while I return to the circuit, while I return to the grassroots. Um, Tony Pratchkia. There are many conflicting in interests apparently in our movement at present, not necessarily a bad thing. Very dangerous sign when we do not engage with those who oppose our ideas and debate them openly. We've already driven some groups underground. What makes us so sure that we can now move into a different phase and spawn a political party? Um, lack of direct democracy uh, is, is uh, a complaint. Um, I'm now going to go to Apostolos Gogakos, a friend and comrade here from Greece. If DMS say yes to the party question, who is going to draft the statutes of the different parties? Well, let me just answer that last question. We will, at DiEM25. Uh, the statutes of the parties are not going to be written by any small team within the country. Uh, the most important aspect of maintaining DiEM as a movement and not turning ourselves into a political party, but having electoral wins, 
will be that we will preserve, we must preserve, this is the greatest asset of DiEM, the way we do things, the way that we design everything collectively, independently of whether one is Greek, French, Italian, and so on. So, let's say we ran, a, we, we started an electoral wing, a party here in Greece, a DiEM party here in Greece. The statues, the manifesto, the, even the committee that runs uh, th this party will have to be approved by uh, all DMRs throughout Europe. Uh, I have seen a number of complaints about, uh, actually, I would say that they go beyond ju being just complaints. They are accusations, really. Uh, that's okay. We are an active, active, an energetic, boisterous movement, um, and it's fine to have even accusations. But let's keep them comfortably. Okay, comrades? Uh, okay, so the accusation is that uh, we sp speak about horizontality, we speak about direct democracy in, in uh, DiEM, but we don't practice this. Uh, and this is evidence from the fact that the coordinating collective has uh, brought down from the mountain, like Moses, uh, the tablets, uh, a, a proposal for everyone. Well, let, let, let me answer this by saying that there seems to be um, a misunderstanding here. We never said that DiEM25 uh, is a horizontal movement. Never. We said that we, remember what we keep saying? That we need to combine horizontality with verticality. And this is enshrined in the organizing principle. On the one hand, we invite Europeans, and indeed not Europeans, if they want to be part of the European movement, uh, because they don't recognize borders, including the borders of Europe, uh, we invite them to form a DSC wherever they want in the world. We have DSCs in South Korea. Yeah? Uh, and the only, there are very simple rules that they must follow to have the input into DM25 and to be recognized as a DSC. They must not raise money illicitly, not go into uh, some alliance with politi other political parties without having the consent of the CC. Um, and uh, uh, what else? And propose, of course, policies and indulge in activities that promote the principles in the manifesto of the M25. That is extremely horizontal. Uh, there is no central control as to who. Uh, can form a DSC, what the DSC does outside the boundaries of the manifesto and our principles. But at the same time, we say that, well, we need to have an, op an opinion. Take, a, for instance, Catalonia. Catalonia erupts, erupted last Sunday with this hideous violence of the Spanish civil guard against uh, peaceful voters in the Catalan uh, um, referendum. Don't we have a position as DiEM25 on the same day? Doesn't our press office uh, post something on the internet? Don't we tweet about it officially as DiEM25? That cannot be done horizontally, comrades. So the question is not whether we are horizontal or not. We're not horizontal. We are horizontal and vertical at the same time. The question is, have we struck the right balance between horizontality and verticality? I'm sure we can strike a much better balance than what we have. But let's sit down and discuss it. Now you will see that um, we've already announced um, a change, a proposed change in the organizing principles to in introduce thematic DSCs. It would be fantastic if we had a, a large array of thematic DSCs, a you know, hundred different thematic DSCs, where the theme is internal democracy and the way in which our democratic processes within DiEM25 color our view about what democratizing Europe means. Um, Let's go to another question. Um, there is a lot of uh, Rosita Alinsk says there is a lot of potential in DM25, but how are you going to prepare these people politically? Uh, you have a, a, you already have experience, of course. I'm going to cut this question short. I'm not going to prepare anyone. I'm not in the business of preparing anyone. We're all going to be be, be preparing together. Uh, I'm not a seasoned politician myself, thank goodness. Uh, we are going to learn the ropes all together through political activity, through what we are doing. Uh, now, let me go to another question again about the political party. Uh, 
this is again about Italy, but I more or less have answered this. Um, there is a question here on uh, the lost potential of DM if we go electoral in any country. The uh, argument of the questioner, uh, whose name is not on my list, uh, apologies for that, I think you'll, re you'll recognize yourself from the question. Uh, the question that you're asking is, um, isn't this electoral win going to exhaust our limited resources? Uh, and instead of spending, expending, investing our resources, our limited resources, in persuading existing political actors and political parties around Europe, uh, we will be wasting them on a campaign that will probably yield us a very low percentage, and then that will bring about the implosion of DiEM25. It's a legitimate concern, but like everything else in life, I believe we have, we're facing two risks, and these are contradictory risks. One risk is that we are not going to go electoral anywhere, and in particular we're going to miss out on the European Parliament elections of 2019. And next time we meet, there will be fewer of us, and then fewer of us, and then fewer of us. Why? Because, let's face it, this constant production of policy papers that have merit, when it is met with inaction, and when these policy papers are not taken up by any political actors, seriously taken up, not being paid lip service to, uh, this is going to create a sense in a, a large part of DiEM25 of uh, pointlessness, that we are pointless. This is one risk. The other risk is that we will create our electoral wings, we will contest in elections in some places or some elections, and that is going to result in a failure and the movement will never recover from this failure. Well, two risks. Which one do you choose? I personally, if, if, if you put a gun on my head and ask me to choose one of those two risks, I would choose the risk of uh, going for it and failing. I prefer um, um, a short and sharp uh, struggle, which ends up in defeat, to a long-term fading out. But there is a mistake in what I'm saying, a profound error at least in what I've said so far, if I do not complete my thought. Allow me to complete my thought. This risk, both these risks, are ameliorated if uh, we're very sensible in the way we use our electoral wings. If our electoral wings are only deployed in places where we have a serious chance of success, where we can be, we can offer unity, where we can register on the Richter scale of electoral um, earthquake, if you want, uh, of an electoral um, presence, and make this a catalyst to do something that we have failed so far to do, to bring into DiEM25, to make DiEM25 known to millions out there who would agree with us and join us if they only knew what our policies are and who we are. We have not been very successful in this. Our growth as a, mem as a movement over the last two years has not been what it could have been. And one important reason is that many good people out there do not see the point of of participating in, in a movement that generates policy agendas, which in the end, citizens cannot vote for in elections. Mm -hmm. So I am convinced that we should go for this, but sensibly. Uh, and I will just remind you of um, the thing I've said five or six times already. 
We're not deciding to run for elections now. We're just deciding to add another tool, the electoral wing in our toolbox, and then let's have the discussion once, and if we decide this, on uh, where, when, and how we use that particular tool. For me personally, a movement that is political and in the end, one of the last hopes of Europe, at least that's what I think, uh, that chooses not to use and not to have, not just not to use, but not to have at all, the electoral tool in its toolbox is a movement that is too introspective and not sufficiently outgoing and not sufficiently ambitious. Let's stiffen our lips, comrades. Let's take courage from the from what I have personally observed in the last 10 days in Italy. Wherever we went, we saw enthusiasm in crowds, large crowds, of people who had never even heard of DiEM25 before, when we explained to them what DiEM25 was all about, and also our determination to be at the forefront, as the avant-garde, of an attempt to hack into the European Parliament elections in 2019, in one way or another. One of you asked, what is the other Colau in Italy? Well, we have a variety of them. We met with civic movements in Bologna, with civic movements in Napoli, with the mayor of Napoli, who is a good dreamer, a good comrade, Luigi De Magistris, who is ready to lead the electoral wing of Italy, if we decide to have one. Uh, here in Greece, in France, where I'm going next, I can assure you that the idea that DiEM25 has this tool in its tool toolkit is an important source of hope. Let's not dash this. Meanwhile, on behalf of the CC, let me invite yet, you yet again to come up with alternative options, to send them to us so that we have a proper debate uh, before the 1st of November internal vote. Ideally, what I would like to see is um, several options being presented to all of us and a debate, maybe, maybe a video conference debate, between people who represent, DMS who represent these different views. Until then, Carpe Diem, it's been good talking to you, even though it would have been far, far better if I could see you, hear you, and uh, respond to you live in the form of a proper Q&A and not this. Thank you very much.